Well morning folks and welcome to the old classic car channel. I'm not firing on all cylinders myself but hopefully the V8 pilot will do. Today's little job, uh, today's little mission should I choose to accept it, is to replace the coolant. I went out and bought some fresh ethylene glycol antifreeze yesterday so we can mix up some of that, drop off the coolant that's in there at the moment. I'm not quite sure what it is but it looks fairly old and a bit like old brown soup so that's probably not the best stuff and it does need replacing every few years anyway so it struck me that it'd be a good idea to at least have a fresh mix in there and then I can forget about that for a little while. So we'll bring this one out and uh, yeah just drop off the antifreeze and mix up some fresh. Another cold start. Be nice to see it outside. I can just sit there warming up for a little while. But we don't want it to get too hot because we are draining the coolant off, so yeah, let it just clear its lungs out a little bit. I'll just just push the choke in a bit and then because uh, if you run these things up and then just switch them off straight away. It can suck the plugs up, so, you know. Those two American V8 engines there. Big 5.7 Hemi in the Jeep. And a 3.6 Flathead in the V8 Pilot. Yeah, it started alright, didn't it? No, it's a bit down, but I've got some fuel in the jerry can, so... Yeah, that's the choke fully in. Is that the choke fully in now, yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good, isn't it? Obviously we've not had it on any long runs since throwing away the electronic ignition and the replacement carb. The other carb is on the shelf, so I could always refit that at some point. But I think if it works on the original setup, we'll just leave well alone. What have we got? It's still very cold on the temperature gauge. The fuel gauge is funny in that it reads that way, so it's full when it's to the left and empty to the right. So at first glance you think, oh, it's three quarters full, but actually no, it's under a quarter full. So that's something to bear in mind with one of these old girls. Yeah, yeah that'll do. That'll do. At least we can drain the coolant off now without it getting too warm and uh, see exactly what it's like. Like I say, it looked a little bit like old soup when I had a pier in the radiator the other day, so I don't think we'll do any harm at all by replacing it with fresh. It's not a pressurised system in these, so anyone that's got to sit up and beg Ford Pop or Anglia will recognise these lovely brass caps, I'm sure. So as you can see, it's a little bit... You can't really see... Yeah, you can't really see the coolant itself, but the orangey reddy brown is literally just because it's an iron block you get a bit of corrosion over the years then that sort of pollutes the, the coolant that's running around so I don't know how old this coolant is even though the engine was out only a year or 18 months ago I don't know how old this coolant is so it just makes sense really just to replace it all then you know exactly where you're at and there we go there's the two drain taps one there and the other over there Harley's just moving the MX-5 which you can just see over there. He's going to give that a wash prior to tomorrow's little gathering. My priority today is to get this drained off. So you've got two drain taps. So I think we're going to need, need to find some old containers to drain this off into. It takes about well, just 21 or just under 22 litres of coolant and all. So we'll have to mix some up. Unfortunately, there's enough space just to clamber underneath without having to jack the car up. I still haven't tried the built-in jacking system yet. So that's something definitely we'll have to try one day. This is the jack all system here. That's the fluid container for it, the reservoir for the hydraulic oil, or fluid rather. And this is the controller. So all 
jacks up the front and the back front and rear is fairly self-explanatory the handle is there and that slots onto there and then you pump it in like a regular hydraulic jack or at least that's the theory well, I haven't been brave enough to try that yet but we will do at some point but probably do it in the garage just in case there's a problem with it retracting again in which case you won't want to be stuck out on the drive so the first time we try that I think we'll make sure it's tucked away in the garage but let's not get distracted I can hear Harley over there getting on with the Mazda so that's good Let's clamber underneath again. I'm used to clambering under here with uh, working on that distributor recently, but this time for a very different reason. What's up? Huh? What's up? All right. oh, good. Have you done it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I finished already. <coughs> you finished already, have you? Yeah, I don't even use any car shampoos. So At least it's not frozen this time, is it? Yeah. The, the sponge was a frozen solid last time, All wasn't right, it? Sponge. Where is it? The sponge? Is it in the bin? Several ice frozen pieces. Oh, right. <laughs> right. Okay. Which one of these will we use? We'll go and drag one of these. Probably use these two, I would have thought. Pristine examples. one of the things I like about older cars compared to those of the 60s and 1970s is that you've got proper drain taps on the radiators. On later cars you have to pull off the bottom hose and the coolant tends to go everywhere but on these cars, cars of this age, you have proper taps so you can just switch it on, turn it off, swap to another container if you need to. I mean I've used sort of two and a half containers here but you can just turn it off, put the new container underneath and open the tap up again so that's all very very civilized just one of the the beauties of cars of this age compared to their later cousins but yeah so that side is pretty much drained off so there's probably a little bit on this side as well so we'll check that one too then we'll go mix up some fresh coolant so there we go all drained off obviously we've got a few leaves floating around that were in the bowls that wasn't in the cooling system it's not the worst I've seen, but yeah, it's obviously a few years old. It does smell antifreezy still, so I'm sure it's still doing its job. But it's always nice to see fresh antifreeze when you take the radiator cap off. So yeah, I don't regret draining this off. On the back of the can, it recommends somewhere between 25 and 33% mixture. So somewhere in that ballpark will do. I've used this one for many, many years. This is the mixing container. It's quite handy because it's got this scale on the side so you can see exactly how much you've got in there. So I'll probably mix it up to about 30%, something like that. And then we shouldn't be too far off. So we've got about just over half a tub here and two fresh containers here. So between them, that should be more than adequate to mix up about 21, 22 litres, something like that. So that's about two litres of the neat concentrated antifreeze in there and then we'll just mix that up with water and we'll get a mix that's around 30 odd percent somewhere like that. In the water but here we've got plenty of fresh water so we'll use we'll use some of that. We can just about get the container under the tap there so that'll do the trick just nicely. Okay, well there's the first batch. I'm not quite sure what percentage that works out at, but if it's two litres of neat antifreeze and about five litres topped up to, so that's two plus three, so I'm guessing what, 40 odd percent, something like that, so that should be more than enough for the old Ford V8. 
There we go. At least this is one of the benefits of all the rain we've had lately is that you've got lots of fresh rain, rainwater to mix the antifreeze into. The filler is nice and high so we shouldn't have to burp it through too much because if the filler is level with the rest of the engine sometimes you have to raise the front of the car up just to, to burp it through to get any air locks out. But as the top of the radiator is so much higher than everything else we shouldn't have any problems in that regard so we'll just top it up gently. Run it with a cap off for a little while, just burp it through on the two top hoses and then see where we go from there. Okay well that's three lots of five litres added in and we can see it now, we well, probably can't see it but it's it's just in there now so I can just about see it myself so what we'll do now we've mixed up another batch like I say it takes about 21 litres give or take and obviously you don't when you drain it you don't always get everything out but I think what we'll do now is fire it up and then once it's warm the thermostats will open and all the coolant is running through the engine and the radiator because obviously when you start it up first thing from cold the water doesn't get into the radiator until it's warmed up and the thermostats open and then the water starts coming up here of these pipes into the rad down cooling and then back into the engine so we need to get it warmed up properly and then we'll monitor the level it's not a pressurized system it's not got a pressure cap on it so we're okay watching it warm up with that off and then we'll just add it to top it up as we need to A little bit of choke. It's still cold. I'm beginning to wonder if there are no thermostats in here. There are two water pumps, one either side, because obviously it's a V engine. So we'll just monitor the level. Yeah. Just push it in a little bit, just to slow it down. Yeah, I know it's cold, but just try and get it as little choke as possible. The fact that the water's frothing already in the radiator suggest that maybe there are no thermostats in here unless I've got my thinking wrong somewhere no but it looks like it's moving around as if already the water pump is running the water around now maybe the thermostats have been left out which is always possible so we'll just let everything settle down Unfortunately, cars like of this age with such tall radiators, the filler is way above the engine, obviously down there. So you don't tend to get too much in the way of airlocks. But on sort of slightly later cars, even like the standard, the radiator is a lot lower, more in line with the top of the engine. And occasionally, you have to lift the front of the car up when you're topping it up, just to try and reduce airlocks. So, just the well, either the thermostats are open all the time. Or maybe it had warmed up already, but I don't think they had. pretty cold. Yeah. And then we can just sort of carefully burp it with this, and that just gets rid of any airlocks. But obviously you have to watch, there's a big fan whirring around there, so you always be tread very carefully when burping the cooling system on any car. So it has dropped a little bit now. Just try burping the other side because obviously you've got it being a V engine you've got coolant down this side and coolant channels and whatnot down that side as well. So just give them a good squeeze and it helps burp everything through. Yeah, she's sounding pretty sweet. 
it's a choke in, is it now? Yeah. So we'll just let it warm up. I'll just add a little bit more in there and keep an eye on the level. I'm expecting to add, you know, another two or three litres eventually. Of course, this is when you find out if you've got any water leaks in the cooling system. Compared to water, just plain water, when you've got a, an antifreeze mix, the more antifreeze, the higher percentage of antifreeze you've got in your coolant mix, the more likely it is to reveal any leaks in the system. Antifreeze is very, very searching. So a leak that doesn't manifest itself just with plain water in there, when you add in antifreeze, it can suddenly reveal leaks that you never knew existed, either on the radiator, on the drain taps, maybe on a hose, somewhere like that. So whenever you put fresh antifreeze in, especially when you don't know what's coming out, you need to have a really good look just to make sure there are no leaks that have appeared out of the blue. That's one sweet sounding engine that is. This is very much an older restoration. It's not perfect by any means on the paint and so on. It's just very, very presentable. A lovely looking car, I think. Obviously at the time they came out, I think they were seen as being a bit out of date. Very similar in many ways, like that Austin 16 that we saw at the Jolly Thresher and also at the Black Swan on New Year's Day. When they came out, they were just a bit of an interim model until new cars could be put into production. This was based very much on the mid-1930s Ford Model 62. Got a different front on the Pilot, just to sort of modernise it a little bit. And I think back in the day they were also criticised just for looking a bit too much like a Prefect. So even though it's a much more expensive car, the Pilot, at first glance to the uninitiated, they might just be looking at a V8 Pilot and that may not have done its sales chances any good at all really. They didn't sell a huge number of these between 1947 and 1951 when they went out of production. It was really just a stopgap until such time as the Mark I era of Ford Zodiac and the Zephyr came into being. Of course they were straight six cars, the Zephyr and the Zodiac, and you had the four-cylinder console as well. So the V8 went out with the V8 Pilot. I've just added a litre of the coolant mix in. Of course, when it gets warm, it expands, then you've got this overflow drain pipe. So if the coolant expands too much, the excess goes down there and just drops down below the front of the engine. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Need to keep an eye on the fuel level as well because I don't think there's a great amount of fuel in it. <coughs> so it shows about a quarter, doesn't it? But obviously we don't know quite how accurate that is. You never rely on the fuel gauge being super accurate. Starting to warm up now again. Super mindful of that big fan whirring away at the front there, so we're not going to get too ambitious under here. But as you squeeze that, it usually affects the level in there. On some engines of this era, you also get drain taps down the side of the block well down there but the handbook doesn't refer to any extra drain taps other than those two at the bottom of the radiator and being a V engine and the exhaust on the outside you wouldn't really be able to get at any drain taps down there so there may be something down there but the handbook doesn't mention it so we'll just go with the two drain taps that we know about and see how we get on but touch wood it seems okay. It's 
So it's had about 16 litres, that's how much it's taken. Which is probably about, about right. The level looks pretty happy now, it's warmed up quite a lot. So what I'll do is I'll leave this mix in the car, I'll just put it in the back of the car and then next time we take it out, once it's cooled off, we can just check the levels again. And just top it up if needs be. But early signs are it's pretty much where it looks lovely and warm. It's pretty much where it needs to be, I think. I think it's probably time to tidy up a bit now. Oh, looks like Dad's here. What's he up to? So we're, we're honoured by the presence of a Jaguar. So where have you been? What do we owe this honour to? Well, the MOT. Oh, the MOT. MOT this morning, yes. Uh, I've not, not seen this here for a while. So this is the X350 Series XJ6, a 3 litre V6 engine. The latest in a line of old Jaguars that Dad's had over the years, XJ6s, XJ12. And there's a bit of a gap, and then this came along a few years ago now. We used to have an XJR ourselves, which was uh, one of my favourite cars. And earlier XJ6s and 12s going back a long, long time. And it's been a while since we've owned a Jag here at OCCHQ. It could well happen again, who knows, but always nice to see this one out and about. Harley's done a good job on the MX-5. Well, that was good news on Dad's car passing its MOT and the V8 Pilot now with fresh coolant, so I think we'll go and have a bite to eat now. Yeah, very worthwhile morning. This little, lovely little box appeared in the post today. This is a new set of ignition points for the V8 Pilot. What a cracking little box that is. But yeah, new old stock parts, that's always good. So the plan is to get hold of another distributor at some point and assemble up a spare complete working dizzy and that can be kept as a spare with the car so that if there are any problems while we're out and about with the distributor that I put on recently then I can just swap it out sort of 20 minutes, 30 minutes under the front of the car and we can swap it out fairly easily. So that's the idea with this, get another dizzy, build it up with some good new old stock parts and just keep it as a spare just in case we ever need it. You may have noticed that the tractor is over here. Well, we moved it from near Ned the Shed a few weeks ago prior to uh, Harley's uh, Shed number two arriving, Fred the Shed. Uh, so I think this can probably go back now. It does need a wash, so I might give it a bit of a rinse down because it has been a bit damp lately, the weather. But yeah, if that's back over somewhere over there, then it will free up the space on the drive here, which is a good thing. Let's give it a quick wash, eh? Right, we've actually rolled it over, we didn't bother towing it. Yeah, just look. Eh? Just move, just get more of the hose out then. Yeah, I know, but it's not that big a deal, is it? But the trick is to give it a wash. Surprising how green it's gone, and we washed it not that long ago, but the weather has been so wet recently that, yeah. Give it a bit of a sprucing up. You're doing a grand job. Getting all those nooks and crannies. Well, there we go. That's looking a little bit, a little bit cleaner, and it's back in its home. We should probably think about letting it go, really. It hasn't run for a couple of years, but it is kind of a cute old thing. 1947, I think this one is petrol, as opposed to petrol and TVO or diesel.
Well, it's the next morning, folks, and the pilot is out and ready, hopefully prepped, for a little run out to this breakfast meeting. We've already had it warming up. The MX-5 is fired up behind, ready to follow us over. So, fingers crossed, we'll have an interesting little morning over at Hopley House. Not too far now to Hopley House Farm Shop. We're just approaching Bentley on the right hand side, just over the other side of this bridge. Bentley Motors, of course, at Pims Lane. There's usually quite a few cars parked under these big solar park just over the way. There's not much there today. No one's here yet. No. But yeah, the home of Bentley Motors. There it is on the side. Guys, is that all right? Well, part one of today's test drive in the V8 Pilot has been completed and it burbled along very smoothly indeed. Just occasionally on the load, if you gave it a bit of a jab on the throttle, you get a little cough and then it would just pick up. So maybe there's a bit of further refinement to do on the carburetor settings, but given that I haven't actually touched the carburetor settings since I fitted this uh, carburetor, I can't complain too much, but no, she rolled along very happily indeed, which was a great. It's a slightly chilly morning today here at Hopley House, but yeah, just a perfect opportunity to give it a bit of a test run. And I was saying to Harley on the drive over, what we'll do is when we get back home, we'll whip the plugs out, because this is its first decent run since all the shenanigans with the electronic ignition and the carburetor swap. So it's the first proper run it's had, properly warmed through, off choke for a long, you know, lengthy period of time. So we'll take a few plugs out and we'll just check the mixtures when we get back home and just see if they're running a bit lean perhaps. Um, I can't imagine it'd be lean but uh, we can always check and uh, the colour of the spark plugs tells you a lot about how the engine setup is doing but touch wood, the early signs are it's running really quite nicely. So anyway let's have a bit of a look around and see what else is going to turn up here today at Hopley House. We usually get pretty good turnout of cars so I'm hopeful we'll get some nice metal to look at very very soon. His dad in his MGB GT. Wonder what time he'd get. He usually beats us to it, actually. So I'm here first for the change, which is a, which is very very nice. Yeah, it's looking well there. Headlamps ablaze. So what else have we got here today? Well, starting with a black Ford Pop, a 103E. And if you've seen some of our crew heritage videos towards the end of 2023, you'll recognise this one because it turned up at crew and looked very very bonny indeed. The weather wasn't very good on that particular day. But hats off to the owner, he had his little Ford out and about and on the road. And that's where they need to be. So this is probably a similar age to our pilot. Probably a little bit later because the pilot's 1950 and the Pops were introduced in 53 as a sort of a, a lower cost replacement to the sit-up and beg Anglia like the one we used to have until only last year in fact. Otherwise very, very similar to the old Anglia. Slightly larger engine. This is 1172cc, still with the, the semaphore indicators there. Yeah. What a bonny little car this is. And this is that Kraken that lost in 1100 we just saw pulling in a few moments ago. A 1964 four-door austin 1100 and happily it's got an information sheet in the window which is something we approve of here at OCC. There we go, Ooh, there's a bit of music on in the background. Originally bought in 64 and used fortnightly until 1971 when the owner passed away. His daughter then used it to go to work and back. Wow. Sold on in the early 1990s with approximately 39,000 miles. So what a super, wow that interior. This fantastic, I hope you can see that, all the original carpets and seats. Yeah. What a lovely little car that is. Later 1100s had the different back lights, the same as those fitted to the, the old FX4 taxis. So this was also penned and designed by Ali Kisigonis, the man responsible for the Mini of course and the, the post-war Morris Minor. The running gear in these is very similar to that of the Minis, so you've got a transverse A-series engine, front wheel drive. What a, what a great little car this is. Best-selling car for eight years 
throughout the 1960s if I remember correctly so they were sold in their millions these cars did but now very very thin on the ground rot has seen most of them off wouldn't take just even you know, after just a few years the sills would start going subframe mountings all that kind of thing the floors so those that have survived now have all been molly coddled at some point in their lives it's really lovely to see this one here today next to that we've got a super sharp a35 this will be familiar to regulars on the channel we saw this one at crew heritage just a couple of weeks ago a capri laser super clean example of the ford capri the car you always promise yourself they said when they first came out with the Mark 1s. Super tidy car. And what do we have here? Mini Clubman Estate. And we can have a peer inside now. Super, super original car, this one. Wow. So, what's the mileage on this then? What's the mileage? Did you I put do, it back to zero when I built it. You, re <laughs> you rebuilt it, did you? Yeah. So you? Was it pretty bad when you found it? Oh yeah, doors, in and out of sills, back doors was halfway up rotten, well, they... doors were rotten, I've repaired them. Oh right. Uh, new wings, oh, second goodness. hand bonnet, complete. It cost me a thousand quid to do the front end of it. Did it? Panels, <laughs> the panels are so expensive now. Do they um, remake them? Do they yeah. remake the Clubman oh, yeah. panels? Yeah. Well, the, the, that Clubman wing now, one of mm. them, you're talking 160 quid for the wing now. Wow. So these pressed on the original panel uh, yeah. presses still. So yeah. at least they fit then. Oh, are yeah. At least they fit. So yeah, they're genuine replacement wings now. Are they? Genuine oh, yeah. Leyland. Yeah, I wasn't sure if they did the Clubman. I know they've done all the body shells and everything and all the panels. Well, they for do the, the shell as well now, not the do they? pan. But they do the, the Clubman. Clubman, do they? Clubman shell, right, uh, yeah. 12, 1300 pounds last time. Uh, were they? Wow. Yeah. yeah. How cool is that? Yeah, they're the original reclining seats, but uh, are they? I've had the mm. yellow piping put round them. Right, right. Yes. The best part about it was the floor there. Oh was yeah, perfect. Was it? Wow. <laughs> I mean, all the all the skirt around the back. It's all brand new. Was it? Yeah, I learned to drive when I was in the 80s. Yeah. Mum had a mini estate, like a 67, yeah. and we learned to drive in that. Because it still had the slidey windows in That's that, right, and, yeah. the, and they didn't. It always used to steam up this thing because the rear windows wouldn't open because there's too much moss in the runners. Um, they do a replacement now, the plastic. Oh, do they? Still, you still got a bit of algae in it. You got a nice old uh, roof rack on this one as well, haven't you? The woods, uh, it's got wooden slats to go. Oh, through, does it? Know. Right, right. I haven't done the wooden slats. Yeah, I like a nice roof rack. Uh, <laughs> whistles a bit when you go on <laughs> Yeah, it's a super. Oh, what's name in it? 12.75. is it? Ooh, so it bobs along quite well then. You've got to remember you're on drum brakes. <laughs> <laughs> a Saab Cabriolet here. A trusty MGB. Ooh, bit of a photo call here. You're right. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> What engine in this one? What engine? What do we have here? Ford Model T, followed by a Sunbeam Talbot. TVR Cerbera taking it easy over the bumps.
floppy TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can get around the Isle of Wight pretty quickly, can't you? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Recommends. Forget the name. Yeah. You know the poly bushes. I don't know why they There's a whopper squeezing in through the gate. So what do we have here? The mighty Chrysler, late 1950s. Look how straight that is down the side. What a beast. Hotly pursued by a Vauxhall Viva. We've seen this one here before, this HC Viva negotiating its way past the front of the MGTF and the Lotus Elan fixed head just over the back there so here's the beautiful Model T we saw driving in just a few moments ago this one dates to 1913 there's the big old talky four cylinder engine how do you drive these Dad? I don't know how you drive these it's very different to drive compared to a normal car. I love all the Ford branded parts on these cars. Whereas the Pilot doesn't say Ford on it anywhere. There's Ford Model T here. What a bobby dazzler that is. So there's quite a few classic Fords here today. We've got this beautiful Model T. Of course, our V8 Pilot, which is 1950, but this is way older, 1913. And there's the Ford Pop 103E and the Lotus Cortina. So, yeah, classic Fords of many different decades. There's a Lotus Elise in the old gold leaf racing colours. The gold leaf Team Lotus livery. Is that incredible Chrysler? What a stunning car this is. And just look down the side. Black is such an unforgiving colour when it comes to bodywork on cars. And there's just not a ripple or ding anywhere. Absolutely incredible condition this one. We can have a bit of a peer in through the window as well. Not a huge amount of leg room in the back. But I guess the idea is that you don't go in the back. But, yeah. Looks like I'm a bit too old. I wish my distributor was that easy to get to. A little Mini that just pulled in a few minutes ago, and Mini Mayfair, about 1989, I think this one. Tinted glass, nice wheels. It's actually quite a good turnout here today. Sounds like a fairly straight through exhaust from this TV on Tuscan. Looks like a bit of a modified front to the usual type. Of Over in this corner we've got a Spartan kit car, home-built car there. And on the end here, our little Lotus Elise that we saw driving in before. With a colour scheme inspired by the gold leaf Team Lotus colours. Yeah. Great little cars these are. And the wheels on this Spartan, I think they are off one of the upper market Cortinas, the Mark IV or the Mark V Cortina. And the back lights are from a Series 1 or Series 2 XJ. The Jaguar XJ6, that's what they originated from. And the mighty Chrysler has just fired up the mighty Chrysler 300. What a machine. Need to get a bit of a swing at it. 
Yeah, so you've booked onto any of the... Uh, no, I, I haven't, uh, I haven't, but I'll, I'll have to wait to see whether it works. Uh, yeah, 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 Another beautiful V8 burble. Well, I think we've seen pretty much all the cars that are going to turn up here today, so it's been quite an interesting little meet, really. We'll fire up the pilot and head back home. Well, there we go, back home safe and sound, and the V8 pilot tucked safely away in the garage, and the MX-5 just out there. Well, that was a pretty successful test run, I think. I think I can be pretty, uh, pretty happy with how that went. It seems to drive really nicely and sounds really good. It started instantly this morning, which was uh, just such a revelation compared to how it was when we first bought it. Occasionally, if I'm being extremely picky, occasionally... You can just get a, a slight hesitation and then it pulls away. But most of the time it just pulls away very cleanly. Even in top gear, going around fairly tight and mini roundabouts, you can just leave it in top gear and let the speed drop right off. Leave it in top gear and it'll just pull away. The torque just pulls you round and off up the road really, really happily. So I think it's probably 95% there. It may just be the odd tweak to do on the carburetor. Um, but really very very little indeed nothing that would stop me actually using it any time now which is a real real result so thank you very much for watching this and the previous v8 pilot videos that have been on the channel lately and hopefully there'll be many many more throughout the rest of 2024 so i'm going to go back inside now have a drink of something warm and yeah many more videos along very very soon a very noisy motorbike riding past just at the wrong moment thanks for watching